was excited. The diesels at yon works, he announced, say that on the other railway there are things called high-speed trains. They have a diesel engine at each end and can go at a hundred and twenty-five miles an hour. Gordon snorted. An engine at each end, he said scornfully. There's only one of me, but I bet I can go as fast as those smelly boxes on wheels. Probably faster, he added. The others said nothing. They had heard Gordon's boasting before. Gordon was still bragging the next morning. Speed's nothing to me, he said. Why, one of my Doncaster cousins went at a hundred and twenty-six miles an hour. I'll show these diesels a thing or two. Just you wait and see. He puffed grandly towards the station. Gordon normally pulled the express, though Henry, James or Bear helped if Gordon was ill or away. Many visitors came to see the Fat Controller's Railway. They often used the express, so it was usually full and heavy. There had been frost during the night, and now the weather was wet and sleety. Sleet settled on the rails, making an icy film across their surface. The carriages of the express stood under the cover of the station roof, but when Gordon was coupled to them, his cab and front end had to stand outside. He grew colder and colder as he waited for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag. Come on, he shivered impatiently. Let's get started. At last, Gordon heard the whistle. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, he shouted as he tried to pull quickly away. But his wheels slipped on the icy rails. The sudden movement made water in his boiler surge forward, and Gordon's driver could not shut off steam. Gordon moved a yard and slithered to a standstill, held back by the heavy train. His wheels spun furiously, but neither Gordon nor his train budged an inch. Help! Help! wailed Gordon, despairing. Trick he knew. An inspector came and tried some more, but it was no good. The fat controller came to see what the fuss was about. He said several things to Gordon, but Gordon was making so much noise that he couldn't hear them. Sparks showered from the rails, but Gordon's wheels went on spinning. It was a quarter of an hour before Gordon had used up all his steam. Reduced pressure allowed the driver to close the regulator, and with a deep sigh of relief, Gordon felt his wheels stop turning. The silence was amazing. Donald came to take Gordon to the shed, and Henry came to pull the express. When the train had gone, workmen had to replace the rails where Gordon had been standing, because his spinning wheels had worn deep grooves in them. The shed was empty. Donald tactfully remembered another job, and left Gordon on his own. But that night Gordon heard a whisper from close by. Did you hear, it hissed, how Gordon went for a spin today? There was a quiet chuckle. Gordon seethed in silence. High-speed engines are all very well, the whisper went on, but Gordon ought to know by now that he's supposed to move his train too. Gordon snorted disgustedly, and with a gasp the whisperer subsided in.